The sermon text I'm going to take a look at today is uh, Job 28, 20 through 28. Where then does wisdom come from? Where does the understanding dwell? It is hidden from the eyes of every living thing, concealed even from the birds in the sky. Destruction and death say, only a rumor of it has reached our ears. God understands the way to it, and he alone knows where it dwells. For he views the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. When he established the force of the wind and measured out of the waters, when he made a decree for the rain and the path for the thunderstorm, then he looked at the wisdom and appraised it. He confirmed it and tested it. And he said to the human race, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to shun evil is understanding. Good morning. My name is Justin Speaker, for those of you that don't know me. My wife, Brittany, and I just seven, celebrated our 17 years of marriage yesterday, and God has blessed us with two beautiful children, Ellie and Noah. <laughs> Today, I'm going to try to unpack a little bit of Job and also look at the importance of the Bible and being involved in the Word. Job was a faithful servant of the Lord with great wealth, as we have heard Pastor Ben mention a few weeks ago. And one day, all of his livestock and family were wiped out, and Job lost everything. So Job's three friends come and try to console him, but they're basically saying all the bad things that happened to Job because, well, he was being punished because he sinned. Some kind of friends, right? Now, for me personally, this summer and fall has been one of the most challenging things to date in my life with family health concerns. I cannot imagine if Joe or Paul or Eli came to console me with these challenges and said to me, well, you knucklehead, you must have sinned for all this to happen. Not really the most consoling or comforting message, right? So we're going to go through a little bit of Job and the conversations with his friends, but one thing stays constant is Job's trust in the Lord. So when God seems gone, where can you look for answers? Well, We're talking a little bit about the Bible out on the sign there, what's the importance of God's word. You're looking through the word. And uh, Job's three friends were Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. And then there's Job there. He's looking a little dismayed today in that picture. Um, Friend one, then Eliphaz replies, as I have observed those who plow evil and those who sow trouble reap it. We've examined this and it is true, so hear it and apply it to yourself. So he's Basically saying, well, Job, you screwed up, you were evil, you sinned, you know, apply that to yourself. But once again, Job remains constant. My body is closed with worms and scabs, and this is Job's reply. My skin is broken and festering. My days are swifter than the weaver's shuttle, and they come to an end without hope. Remember, O oh God, that my life is but a breath. My eyes will never see happiness again, Job 7 five through seven there, but Job really is trying to hang on to that hope. Then his friend too comes along, and like I said, they, you know, they're not really the kindest of friends. Uh, then Bildad, the Shiite, replied, how long will you say such things? You know, saying that, you know, I'm believing in God, and, you know, your words are blustering wind. Does God pervert justice? When your children sins against him, he gave them over to penalty of their sin. He's just trying to say, you know, you screwed up, they screwed up, you know, that's why they were taken away from you or were killed. Job, then, how can a mortal be righteous before God? Though I were innocent, I could not answer for him. I could only plead with my judge for mercy. He's still constantly saying, God, you know, be with me through this and trying to remain faithful, even though he's been through a lot of adversities. Friend number three to Job, then Zophar replied, Can you fathom the mysteries of God? If you put away that sin that is your hand and allow no evil to dwell in your tent, then you will lift up your face without shame. He's constantly just pointing the fingers, all three of them. They were basically, if you read read Job, they're basically sitting around this circle and You know, Job's just sitting and listening, and then he gets an occasional chance to rebuttal uh, 
each chapter is one, uh, you know, friend bashing him, and then he gets a little chance for a rebuttal, and um, but he stays faithful. And Job replied, doubtless your people and wisdom will die with you. To God belong the wisdom and the power, counsel, and understanding are his. God gives us our wisdom. We can find it through the Bible. Uh, and then friend number one gets one more chance here. Deliphaz replied, all his days, uh, the wicked man suffers torment. The ruthless through all the years and stored up for him. For the company of the godless will be barren and fire will consume the tents of those who love bribes. Uh, Job, staying solid again, replied, Will your long winded speeches never end? Will you stop saying, you know, tormenting and saying, you know, you must have sinned? Also, could I speak like you if you were in my place? Should I come, you know, if you screwed up or if you had lost all these things, should I bash you? Um, I could make fine speeches against you and shake my head at you, but my mouth would encourage you, comfort from my lips, and would bring you relief. I think that's really powerful trying to say, you know, if, if you were in my shoes, I wouldn't be saying, well, you sinned, you screwed up, you need to repent. You know, go ahead and say it, you sinned already. Um, he's trying to encourage us. And he's still encouraged through the Lord. In Job 26, uh, you know, wisdom comes from the Spirit of God. And Job replies, what great insight do you have displayed? Who has helped you utter these words? And whose spirit spoke from your mouth? Elihu continued, be assured that my words are not false. One perfect in knowledge is with you. And wisdom tells the truth about God. Then the, here's the Lord talking and answered, Who is this that darkens my counsel with, with words without knowledge? And he's talking to those three friends um, in Job 38, 1 through 2. You know, I am angry with you, you two friends, because you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. And God is you know, saying, you know, Job was with me, and and through this process, and you guys were just sitting there, you know, talking ill and, and talking untruthful things. And then where does the wisdom come from, as we read in Job 28? Um, where does your understanding dwell? It is hidden from the eyes of every living thing, it is concealed even from the birds in the sky. And God understands the way it to it, and he alone knows where it dwells. You know, we find that wisdom in the Bible that we'll further on discuss a little bit. And he said to the human race, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to shun evil is understanding. We have to continually shun the evil one and continue to be, fear the Lord and continue to be in his word. God is greater than any mortal. Why do you complain to him that he responds to one's word? For God does not speak now one way, now another, through no one perceives it. And then uh, just uh, sanctify them by the truth of your words in John 17 17. I think that's a pretty good one to tie into here. Um, so, what's so important about the Bible? It's a neat acronym that I, or a neat acronym that I was mentioned to me in one of my men's Bible studies that I attend. Um, you know, basic instructions for before leaving Earth, and how true. You know, anywhere you maybe looking down or having a stressful day, you can find the answers in the Bible. Having a great day, you can find the answers in the Bible, and the truth sets us free. John eight thirty two. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I'm going to read a little bit of a clip out of a devotional that uh, it's actually by Phil Robertson, um, his daily Phil. If you ever get a chance to uh, pick it up, it's a, it's a great daily devotional. It says, everything is up in the air, the liar says. So follow your own desires and make your own truth. 
And it kind of feels like the world is that way right now. And the liar, that's the devil. You know, he's always around. He's always trying to convince us to do things that we shouldn't. Um, can there be any, any doubt that America has fallen under the delusion of the evil one? And yes, this is bad news. But here's the good news. The gospel news, Jesus came to show us the truth that would set us free from the evil one's delusions. John 8, 32. Again, look at the writings of Paul, and Paul goes on and talks, and he's always encouraging the fellow churches to follow Christ and be involved and follow the word. The Bible is God's written word, and it contains his internal timeless truth. Some might say is God-breathed. Um, in Romans 10, 17, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about Christ. When Pastor Ben asked me to give the message, he wanted me to share some of my Bible habits. Well, it's no secret that I'm not a pastor or even what some would call a scholar on the Bible. I have to admit, my early years, I had not studied the Bible much. January 2017, Brittany and I attended Via de Cristo, a Christian leadership retreat that would change our lives. During this event, I was invited to attend a men's Bible study on Monday nights. I did not know at the time that this study would hold a permanent spot on my calendar. I was first scared to attend because I did not know the Bible as well or very well and didn't want to be looked down upon. But that was never the case. Christ will meet you where you are. The following January, Brittany and I were invited to attend a small group study at Joe and Rachel Symington's. If you are not part of a small group study, I highly encourage it you to join one or form one. It is amazing how the people involved quickly become family. There are many Bible studies that you can get involved with in the area, from a men's group that meets here at Faith on Saturday mornings, a men's group on Monday mornings up at camp at 6.30 in the morning. They always have great coffee. Uh, I believe that there are various women's groups that meet as well, and don't be hesitant to form a study with close friends or family. A little reading from Acts 8, 30 through 31, and it's with the Ethiopian eunuch, and uh, Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet. And Philip says, do you understand what you're reading? And the eunuch says, how can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him, and he went through it. What's well, like a study. Get together, and, and we can all grow from one another. Uh, one thing that we need to remember, though, is these weekly studies are amazing in Sunday morning church service, but we need to be in the Word on a daily basis. One thing that has helped me with this is having the Bible app on my iPad, as there are hundreds of devotionals you can choose to be a part of. Also, there is provides a verse of the day that is great to read, but still nothing replaces the printed copy of the Word, still the number one best-selling book. Often I am reading something in my app and I will go to my paper copy, which is a study Bible, to get additional insight in the passage if I need clarification. I believe today's gospel or the gospel lesson in Matthew, uh, therefore everyone who hears the words of mine and puts them into practice is like wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house yet did not fall because his foundation on the rock. If we build our foundation upon the Bible and God's truth, uh, we can always have a sturdy foundation. We all have busy schedules, but I encourage everyone to make it a priority to dig into the word, and this is where you'll find God's truth, as is God's words spoken. Amen.